hello to everybody that is joined us uh, through there as well. And just so you all know, we are recording this webinar as well. And I want to extend just a warm welcome to all of our District 215 so students, know, our families, our staff, all of our school board members as well. Um, and then also, of course, a special thing, uh, thank you to all of our parents and guardians that are on here too. All right. And then so uh, to start off, my name is Karina Hernandez Casares, and I'm District 215's Family Outreach Specialist and Spanish Language Interpreter, and I'll be your moderator this evening. Um, so again, we are recording this session, and then we'll also be sending out a written version in both Spanish and in English. So I'll now repeat this information in Spanish uh, for those listening as well. Mi nombre es Karina Hernández Cáceres y soy la intérprete del distrito y también el especialista de alcance familiar. Vamos a grabar esta sesión, pero también vamos a mandar la información en inglés um, y en español y esa información será escrita. And um, before we get started with all of our introductions, um, so apart from tonight, we have a lot of wonderful events planned for all of you this fall sem uh, semester. And these events have been um, emailed and more updates are to come as well. But our next event is our Parent Social with Administrators, which will be on August 31st at 6.30 p.m. at TF South Grand Lobby. Um, and then, uh, so let's go ahead and introduce our administrators. Um, so first we are going to get started with Dr. Uh, Rena Whitten, who is the Assistant Superintendent of Student Services. Uh, Dr. Whitten, you wanna <laughs> wave? Thank you. And then we also have um, our uh, John Robinson, the Assistant Superintendent of Career Development. Uh, we have Becky Shuba, the Assistant Sorry, Superintendent uh, of Teaching and Learning, and uh, she's not visible right now, but she uh, is on this uh, webinar, Laquisha Martin-Dean. She's the Director of Teaching and Learning, and she'll be answering questions along with uh, Becky Shuba that are coming in through social media. We also have our principals, Ray Williams from the center. We have uh, Brian Rosinski from TF North. Also have our and then uh, Jake Borley from TF South, and then we also have with us Anita Howard, who is the new executive assistant to the superintendent and the board of education, and also our public relations officer. And uh, she, along with Dr. Whitten, will be monitoring the Q and A on Zoom. And then uh, lastly, I want to introduce also our superintendent, Dr. Uh, Sophia Jones Redmond, and she'll be sharing an overview of um, the school year in just a moment. So we do want to get started with these questions. Uh, we want to honor everybody's time here. So uh, just so that you all know, we will be spending most of our time answering questions that came in before the webinar, but then as time permits, we will also allow uh, questions from um, the audience. So you will be able to put those questions in the chat and then also in the Q&A. And again, we do have um, I, uh, we do have some staff monitoring those as well, both on the Facebook Live and on this webinar. Um, so let's get started with uh, Dr. Jones Redmond. Um, so Dr. Jones, would you be able to give us just an overview of how this uh, start of the school year will look? The past couple of years have been a little bit unusual. Um, so any information you can provide um, would be wonderful. Thank you, uh, Ms. Karina. I appreciate you setting this all up, first of all, and thank you. You've been a wonderful addition to the district. Uh, I think you may be um, having some feedback. We're hearing Facebook Live as well as the regular uh, webinar, so I think we need to try to correct that. Um, I think that was uh, something in the chat. But hello, community, parents, and everyone who's on the call. We're super excited about this school year. This was our first, this was my first time today uh, being a part of the regular Institute Day for teachers. Um, last year, we just had it locally at each campus. And this year we were able to all come back together at, at one one uh, building, bring all the campuses together, and it was electrifying and exciting. Um, our staff is ready to go. 
Uh, of course, we're still uh, dealing with COVID, um, but on a less impactful way. Uh, we sent out guidance to the local today about our uh, COVID protocol. We're waiting for them to review it so that we can uh, share it with everyone. Um, as you know, the CDC just came out with new guidance about less than a week ago. So we're excited about coming back on next on this coming Monday, August the 22nd. We are having a regular bail schedule. We will be in person. Let me just say that again, we are in person. Um, we're ready uh, for us to be face-to-face -face with students starting off, off the year. So um, we're excited, got some new exciting things planned for this year. But the bottom line is to continue with our plan of educating our students and continuing to provide them with more diverse options so that they can make uh, critical decisions on their future. So classes start August 22nd. We are uh, in person. We have a regular bail schedule and um, regular transportation schedule, and we're going from there. So glad to see 120 individuals on the call. Thank you. I do see a couple of board members, so I want to acknowledge Ms. Jackson, um, and I have to look for the other name, but thank you for joining us today, and our hope is to answer as many questions as possible. So thank you um, again, Ms. Karina. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Um, so I think with that, we're ready to move on to um, our first uh, topic. So the first thing, and I think um, the biggest thing that has been um, the campuses have been working on the past uh, few months have been uh, registration. So that is, if you have not completed it yet, it is very, very important that you do so as soon as possible. Um, the online registration is uh, still open, but again, as soon as possible that you can complete that, um, the better. So if you have, um, if you are a returning student, please make sure that you complete the online uh, registration through uh, PowerSchool and then um, turn in any necessary documents that you need as well. And then if you are a newer incoming or transfer student, um, then uh, that would be, process would be a little bit different and you would definitely want to consult your uh, campus's individual website to see what those instructions are. Um, those instructions are uh, listed there and everything that you would need as well and who you would need to send those documents to. Um, so if you've been uh, contacted that your registration is not yet complete, there are four main reasons why this might be. Um, so uh, the first one is if you, of course, have not completed the online registration, um, if you are missing residency documents, uh, any medical records um, that you're missing as well, or if you've chosen the option that your address was not correct while completing the online registration, then that might still be being verified. And that might also be why uh, your registration is not complete, even if you've done um, the other steps. So please make sure to be checking your emails and your voicemails, uh, just in case the school has contacted you that you are missing any of those things or um, and that your uh, registration is incomplete. Um, so you'll want to contact your school's uh, registrar for more information if you're wondering exactly what you're missing. Do any of the uh, principals wanna add anything specific to their campus or is everything good? If everything's good, if you could just give me a thumbs up. All right, um, so with that, then we can move on to uh, the TF North principal, Brian Rosinski, and he's going to answer some questions about uh, scheduling, which has been um, another popular topic that came up in those uh, questions that parents have sent in. Um, so the most popular question was probably, uh, where can uh, parents or students find their schedule? Thank you, Karina. Uh, good evening, everyone. As far as schedules, the place uh, to find the most up-to-date schedule is always Power School. Uh, especially, I know, I think both campuses had freshmen come in and receive hard copies of schedules. Understand those, those could change uh, at times. Power School is always 100% up-to-date. Now, with that being said, there might be some people out here who right now they're not seeing their child's schedule on Power School. 
or their child can't see their schedule. And that comes back to what Karina was just speaking of, until you are fully registered, and that includes residency, health records, online registration, until that is complete, you will not see your schedule on, uh, on PowerSchool. Um, but that is the way to do it. Now, also, I do understand we might have incoming freshmen coming in who are, who are not familiar. They don't know how to check their PowerSchool uh, yet to see their schedule. We will have hard copies available as well when they come in Monday morning. Uh, at the North Campus, people enter in the cafeteria and uh, we will have counselors on hand with hard copies to assist students as well. Thank you. So what can uh, students do if they want to uh, change something in their schedule? Who can they contact? Um, what should they do? Right, great question. I know uh, I get a lot of those requests myself uh, from students and we, we want to accommodate students, but we do need everyone to understand it. Uh, putting together a, a master schedule is a, a giant puzzle and there's limited availability in, in some classes. So it's not always so easy to make changes, but we do want to accommodate uh, students when we can. They would go through their counselor. The best person to contact would be their counselor. Email is what I strongly recommend, uh, is that's the best way to get a hold of them. And their counselor should get back to them, letting them know, yes, that uh, you know, I, I am able to make that change. Or in some cases, they might say, oh, I'm sorry, we're not, we are not able to. I will, uh, you know, I'll give a, a heads up to everyone. The request that usually does not go well is just, I don't like my lunch period. I want a different lunch period. <laughs> Right, that that normally cannot be accommodated. Now, if you're in a class, if you're scheduled for a class that you know you should not be in, you absolutely don't want to be in, and it's not a required class, there's something else you're interested in. Then, absolutely, we try to uh, we try to make that happen. Great points. Um, so, if apart from courses, if students want to um, get involved on their campus with either sports or activities, where can that find that information or who can they contact and just in general, how are students informed about that information? Right, so, uh, sports and activities, first and foremost, I can't stress how important it is for students to be involved. Find something, our district does an amazing job providing opportunities, whether you're at South, the center or North, there are incredible opportunities that, that uh, play into all sorts of different interests that students might have. So that's number one, that we wanna make sure people are interested and, and do take that, take that giant leap. It can be a leap sometime to join that sport, join that activity, but we want that, we promise you, it'll be worthwhile for you and you'll enjoy it. Uh, at all campuses, we, we are heavy on announcements, daily announcements, pushing things through email to students. Uh, there's an act at North and South, there's an active athletics and activities office that has uh, all kinds of information for that, making it as easy as possible uh, to sign up. So really at the end of the day, the simple answer is find an adult, find an adult, tell them, hey, I, I'm looking to sign up for this and we will absolutely uh, point you in the right direction. But that act activities and athletic office is a great place to start. Awesome, thank you, Mr. Rosinski. Um, so let's now move on to uh, Becky Shuba. She's gonna go over a few uh, questions about um, teaching and learning. So the first question that uh, we got was, is a uh, freshman permitted to choose his or her uh, elective courses? So when we did scheduling in the spring, yes, uh, all freshmen were uh, had a choice in what elective they wanted, possibly world language, maybe art, could be music. Um, but sometimes based on the classes they need, their elective choices might be limited. So for example, our band students, um, that often takes up two hours. And so they don't, that's initially their elective. They don't have another choice beyond that. Um, and sometimes depending on other courses that students need, for example, if your student has success seminar, that would be their elective. Uh, but overall, yes, a freshman can choose their elective. And like Mr. Rosinski said earlier, um, to the best of our ability, we place that student in the first elective, but we have them choose al alternate choices in case they cannot get into their first choice. That's great information to know, um, definitely. So the next couple of questions have to do with honors courses. Um, to, so to start off, uh, are some incoming freshmen placed in honors classes upon enrollment? Um, and if so, how are these students informed? 
So uh, last spring, again, when students set their courses, our uh, guidance department reached out to students with their uh, final choices of their schedule. So that's how they would have been informed. If they, for some reason, if it were a new student or they were not informed at that time, they can see that schedule on PowerSchool. Thank you. So along with that, um, so is signing up for honors course is a matter of choice or is it based on the school counselor's decision? So that's something that happens in collaboration with the teacher, the counselor, the parent, and the student. Initially, what we're looking at, uh, the feeder schools have given us information um, based on teacher recommendation. Uh, some of our schools have different diagnostic test information that they've shared with us. Um, and then obviously the parent and the student feedback. So that initial information is what places them in honors, um, but that can be a continuing conversation with that guidance counselor, teacher, uh, parent and student if uh, there is a different placement that a parent feels is better for their student. Thank you, Mrs. Shuba. So now we're on to Mr. Robinson for some CTE questions. Uh, Mr. Robinson, we have, um, I know we have a lot of really incredible options for students in uh, CTE. So could you go over a little bit about what CTE stands for, um, what your department does, and all of uh, some of the uh, wonderful opportunities that students have available to them? All right, thank you, Karina, and good evening, everyone. Um, First and foremost, I want to state that CTE, I know that's an acronym, acronym that stands for Career Technical Education. And many of our courses are connected with business courses that we have in the, in the district, computer science courses, uh, specific trades that we have to, to offer as, as far as courses concerned to prepare our students for real world work. So in essence, overall, CTE prepares students for the world of work related to the job market that's out there right now. So we have 14 CTE programs, including a variety of business and computer science courses. Um, uh, we have uh, automotive technology as a program of study, collision repair as a program of study. We have our new programming of barbering and cosmetology. And we have building construction, well de uh, development, uh, collision repair. Um, um, we have a future teacher's pathway to grow our own teachers to serve the community that, that they once grew up in. And so we take pride in that. And the list goes on, on and on. So in essence, to get more detailed information regarding all of our programs, this includes our college dual credit and dual enrollment programs. You can visit our uh, career development website from the district homepage or your school's homepage, and I will provide the, that particular uh, link through a URL. Uh, I'll post that URL for you in the chat box, so you can pretty much visit that, that particular web page, and you can get more detailed information in reference to that. Thank you. So um, let's say students are taking uh, CTE courses um, that are at the center and not at their home campus. What can mm -hmm. they expect as far as the bus schedule? So the, with the bus schedule, that, that varies uh, for the center every year. So parents should receive information regarding bus schedules uh, to the center and through their email. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so now we are going on to Mr. Gorley. And uh, we had some questions come in about um, just on fees and materials. Um, so with the fee waivers, um, how if they've completed the uh, reduced uh, fee application, how will parents know if that has been um, approved? Uh, first of all, good evening, everybody. I would uh, want to encourage everyone, if you have not completed the free and reduced application yet, please do so. It's in your interest to see if you qualify. Uh, we do have a, a number of students who are what are called direct cert, which means we already know that they qualify because they're a part of like a, a federal aid program already. Um, however, what we tell parents to do or encourage them to do is to hold off on paying any fees until after the applications are certified by the state. And that usually happens each year in November. 
Uh, once the district receives the state certification list, we then go through and remove or adjust charges on student accounts as necessary. And so you will be receiving in winter or early spring uh, a copy of an adjusted account statement that either still will have the fees on it or they'll be adjusted or removed. Thank you. Um, so with materials, this uh, year we did not have a uh, book pickup for returning students. Uh, so we had a lot of parents wondering if they have a child who's a returning student, when will they get their books? Um, will that be during the first week of school? Uh, is there any additional steps that they need to do for that? Uh, it, no, it depends upon the campus. At South Campus, any returning student uh, their books have been preloaded into their current lockers. So they just go to their locker from last year and the books should be there. If there are any problems or if there was a schedule change after the books were placed, uh, they can visit the bookstore during lunch during that first week and it, we can make any adjustments. Uh, at the center, they'll be getting their books for their individual teachers and students at North will be picking up their books from their sixth period teacher all during the first week. Great, thank you, Mr. Gorley. You're welcome. All right, so uh, next up is Mr. Williams, and he's going to go over some information about uh, buses, which I'm sure you all might be very curious about because we want to make sure that uh, students can get there on the first day. Uh, so Mr. Williams, how can parents get info on bus routes and schedules? Um, there's been, especially for their specific campus or their specific student. Thanks, uh, Karina. Excellent question. Parents, before I answer that question, uh, as a district, on behalf of our superintendent and all of us, we want to thank you for your patience last year if you had a returning student with regard to transportation. We know that there were some hurdles. Uh, Kicker has um, informed us that we will be, and we were last year, a priority. However, they were short-staffed, so we are grateful that their staffing numbers are up, but they are still looking to hire if you know anybody who wants to drive the bus. So we appreciate you for that. But Karina, to your question, all of our campuses' websites have a um, hosting or a listing of the bus route information. I know personally for the center, that information was emailed because we work with district office to try and make sure that our bus routes were better than what was initially provided. We didn't want the bus and the superintendent did inform us it was unacceptable for a student to be on the bus for over an hour, which some of the routes were. So we apologize for you getting that later than what we would normally like, but we are in contact with them with regard to um, making those bus routes shorter and a little bit more efficient. But again, all of that information is on the website and it has been emailed if a student attends the center. So that was sent out today. If a student has a bus or transportation because they have a 504 or an IEP, that will be answered a little bit later in the uh, session. But that's it for busing. Thank you. So earlier we mentioned the importance of just getting involved in athletics and activities. So along with that, if uh, students are in activities or athletics after school, are there buses available to accommodate their students? Yes, as Principal Rosinski mentioned, we certainly want students to get involved and there are a number of opportunities to do so, but we understand that transportation could be an issue. So for the center, we normally do not have uh, transportation after school because we don't have uh, host uh, any activities in sports after school. But for both home campuses, there are activity buses. The bus routes are usually at a, a 4.45 p.m. bus uh, after dismissal. So any student who stayed for homework center or assistance with regard to that. And then if they had a sports or their practice was a little bit later, there is usually a 6.30 bus as well. But any coaches uh, and the athletic office will inform students if there's any changes to those routes, but a 445 and then a 630 if they're staying for sports and activities or club meetings. Thank you. So that about rounds up the information on buses. So next, we're moving on to Dr. Whitten, and she's going to be talking about um, some questions related to IEPs, 504s, and some other special services for students. And that first one is, uh, how will the IEPs and 504s for the current year be drafted? Sure, so all IEPs and 504 plans are updated annually. 
So if you were with us last year and you had a meeting in September, you should be looking for an invite to a meeting uh, this September. If you are new to the district with a 504 plan, we take in those new plans, we review them and make sure that they are appropriate, and then we'll use them as they stand. If we need to update them, you will receive a phone call from one of our student services coordinators, Ryan Berthold at TF South, Tashara Tate uh, over at TF North, to schedule an appointment for you to come in and sit with the team and develop the 504 plan. Um, if you are new to the district and you're dropped off an IEP, we'll review that as well to make sure that it's appropriate. Uh, we'll adopt it if it is. If not, you'll receive a call for a meeting. But either way, we have annual review meetings every year, depending on the date of your last meeting. Thank you. Um, so uh, back to the buses for a second. Uh, what is the bus schedule for children that have either 504s or IEPs with the front door pickup? So that uh, bus schedule is set up by the transportation company. That company contacts the families directly. Um, the schedule based on, is based on how close you live to the program or to the school. So that information is set up directly with the family, with the bus company. If you have not heard from the bus company, please feel free to call the student services office and speak to Ms. Piaz and she will be able to contact that company and get a time and a schedule for your child. Thank you, Dr. Wooden. So another question that we had was, are the classes conducted for students whose primary language is not English done on specific times and how long are these courses? Okay, the courses for students um, who, uh, whose uh, language, primary language is not um, English, they are the same courses, run the same time as our normal course schedule. So uh, the algebra course is 55 minutes, five days a week. The only difference is that not only is that teacher a content specialist, but they are also, um, they have an endorsement in working with students whom English is a second language. So those courses run year round or are semester based, the same as they would be for a student who was not receiving that additional support for language. Thank you. And the last question I have for you is, with those services, what is the criteria in determining whether a student whose primary language is not English continue with those extra classes? Sure, so every year students take the access test and that test uh, looks at proficiency. And that's how a student is either continues in our uh, bilingual program or uh, services are discontinued. We also look at previous courses and academic success as a measure as well. But really it's that performance on that access test that helps us to make that determination. Thank you, Dr. Wooden. And that last question rounded up the questions that we got through uh, beforehand, but we are taking also right now questions from the audience. So anybody that is listening through our Zoom, you are welcome to type any questions that you have in the Zoom chat, and we will be answering those live. And let me, let me just add while we're waiting for those questions, I want to reassure all of our parents all of you all who are on Facebook Live or on the webinar, we will get through this. <laughs> we will make sure everyone is properly scheduled, properly a assigned to a class, properly in an activity or sports. Um, so I want everyone to just rest assured. Uh, we do this every year. Um, this year is a little different than last year because we were really heightened at a heightened level with COVID. But I want to uh, just assure everyone that we'll get through this. And I know one of the differences this year is that we're requiring uh, all of our students to have the necessary immunizations and physicals prior to fully being registered. But I'm really excited that we are over 70% of all of our students that are incoming and returning, um, that they have completed their registration. And that's really assuring. We didn't want to wait until October, let everyone register and come in, and then in October exclude students because they didn't have their immunizations or their physical. So it's a little different this year, we wanna start the year off with having that. And I'm excited that our numbers are 
as high as they are, and they're going to be growing over, I'm sure, tomorrow and the weekend. But we will make sure that all these processes are in place. So I just want everyone to um, know that. So um, thank you, Karina, for posting this and for uh, allowing everyone to have their questions answered. There's some great questions in the chat. And so what do you have? All right, so taking a look at our uh, questions and answers that are still open. So we have, um, when can new freshmen pick up books or schedules if they haven't yet picked them up? Principals, do you want to um, respond? Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, I, I don't have a freshman, but for the center, our book process and schedule process will be, students will be greeted on the first day of Monday with a hard copy of the schedule as they enter into uh, the building, and then books will be distributed by the teachers. Uh, we're, we're trying to use quite a bit of the technology, thanks to the uh, our superintendent, our director of IT, and our school board who supported the one-to-one uh, -one, uh, model, which we're kind of operating in now. So quite a bit of it will be on their Chromebooks, but any textbooks that are needed will be distributed by my individual teachers and schedules will be available as soon as they arrive to the campus on Monday. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rosinski and uh, Mr. Gorley, would you be able to answer those questions for your, answer that uh, question? For your particular campus about uh, freshmen and what they can do if they missed book pickup and where they can find their schedule. If they did not attend book pickup, they're not considered to be fully registered. So they will be uh, sent to the cafeteria on the first day and parents called about what is missing or what needs to be complete in order for them to be fully enrolled. I said North, uh, similar to South, it does come down to that being fully enrolled. Now we did have, right, we did have a few families uh, who reached out to us. They weren't able to make book pickup, but they've been able to complete the process uh, through other means. Uh, so again, as, as Mr. Williams said, uh, we will have those hard copies of schedules available when they enter the building. Uh, and, and for everyone here uh, from that will be attending North, we ask all students to enter in our cafeteria on the west side of the building on that first day of school. And then we also will have an entrance on the uh, south side as well, but it's uh, very important on that first day. That's where we have every student schedule. Uh, so the best place to come in would be that cafeteria on the west side of the building. And, and I want to, as Dr. Jones has tried to assure everyone, uh, especially with our freshman students across the district, it is all hands on deck making sure we, we know it's a, we know every freshman comes in a little bit nervous, a little bit scared. Um, we're used to it, as, as Dr. Jones said. We, we've done this year after year after year. Um, so there are adults in the building. There are upperclassmen who volunteer to help out on that first day, help freshmen get where they're going, all, um, all of those things. So we, we really do go out of our way to make sure, uh, you know, no freshman is, is lost or confused. I mean, I mean, they will be a little bit confused, but we make sure to get it right uh, as quickly as possible. And let me, thank you, Mr. Rosinski. And let me add, uh, add, I know there's been a question possibly because you saw this in the news that one of our feeder districts is implementing a clear backpack policy. TFD 215 does not have that policy. We do not require our students to have a clear book bag. Let me just repeat that. We do not have our, uh, expect our students or require our students to have a clear book bag. Um, and it's important for me to share with all of you, um, before the end of the school year last year, we uh, had a comp we hired a company to come out and do a complete security audit and to help us develop a plan as to how we can ensure uh, that our students are safe, that our staff are safe, and that anyone who's visiting the building is safe. 
That was not one of their recommendations. And let me just repeat that. For our district, that was not one of their recommendations. And we received a report of over 30 or 40 pages for each campus, each building. And so we are not at this time implementing that policy. They recommended a number of things that we're uh, implementing, but that was not one. So it's important that you know that because I know you are very interested in making sure that you equip your students with the required school supplies. That is not one. We do not have that requirement. Um, and so you don't have to run out and try to get a clear book back. I want to make sure parents are okay and know that. Thank you. Thank you. And another question I see coming in is uh, somebody asked, the, mentioned that this is a question from social media. Somebody asked if there will be an open house for the new barber and cosmetology students. I believe I'll go ahead and answer that. Uh, yes, there will be an open house for the lavish barber and cosmetology the school. And at that point in time, but we will, once we establish a date, we will. Uh, disseminate that information to the, the parents and students of our new cohort. So that will be an open house. Thank you. And um, we do have some questions that have already been answered in the chat, but I just want to uh, state them out loud in case anybody has the same questions. Um, so we've had some questions come in about the bus schedule. So that information, um, again, can be found on the individual campus uh, websites. And um, somebody else asked if there was still a cleaning protocol for the school and classes for safety measures. And uh, that answer is yes. And then I see one question in the question and answers. Somebody asked if their child is registered, but the schedule is still not online. And uh, there were some IT issues. And I believe the email to contact if you are having IT issues is elearning at tfd215.org. Are there, let's see, I also see in the question and answers that there's been some questions about food allergies. Would the uh, principals be able to help me out with that question? It depends on what allergies you're talking about. Um, we don't serve meals with peanuts and that sort of thing. Um, but if your student has a specific concern, they, they should talk to Ms. Burford in the cafeteria. And we do also offer a salad bar daily. Right, at the, in North, at the North Campus as well, uh, they make sure to have postings up regarding allergies, uh, who, who you can ask if you're not sure about something, and also even go a step further with some lunches that, that may have something of concern, they make sure to post that uh, as you enter the line. Uh, what you know what may be in that in that food uh, that food option for the day and the center follows the same procedure that uh, principal Rosinski just stated what are your school hours uh, we're eight to four is that correct yes that is uh, that is correct um, and we, I know I just saw a question is, you know, will we, will be, will we be open for uh, people to bring in documentation? Yes, we're, we're not, uh, because we are fully kind of back right now, all our staff is back and have a lot of meetings going on. Uh, so we wouldn't be able to necessarily have a meeting with you to help you through the process tomorrow because it is a, a busy time, but we're absolutely open if you need to drop off documents. 
uh, just come to the front door at North. I think the other principals can share where to go at their campus, but come to our main entrance and we are happy and willing to uh, collect any documentation that you still need to turn into us. Thank you. And we've also gotten a lot of questions on masks. Um, so students are not uh, required to wear masks, um, but in, uh, but I believe they can still be worn. Is that true across all the campuses? Yes. Thank you. And then somebody else also asked about any uh, monkeypox or COVID. Um, precautions that we're taking. Would either the principals or Dr. Jones, would you like to address that question? Well, Becky, why don't you? I know you've been working diligently on, on some protocols. We, um, we are following what the Centers for Disease Control and the Illinois Department of Public Health and our Illinois State Board of Education um, sets forth for us. Um, so right now, um, that's maintaining those safety precautions of um, distancing when possible, um, being sure to sanitize items when shared. Um, also, we have protocols for um, symptom checks, uh, for calling the nurse, um, and all of this will be released to parents um, very soon. Unfortunately, uh, we just got the changing guidance this past week, as Dr. Jones said. So um, we will be putting this out to parents so that they know uh, the protocols that we are following in the schools. Um, but please be assured that we are still very vigilant, um, keeping up to date on all of the latest um, meetings around this um, from the state and from the health department so that we can be sure to, to create a safe environment for, for our students. Thank you. And I've also uh, just been informed that through social media, there's been a lot of questions coming in about Lavish. Mr. Robinson, would you be able to give a brief overview of Lavish and any updates that there are? Well, no, we're going into our second year with our program. Of course, uh, we just started our brand new cohort for 2024. Um, any students that are interested in and enrolling in the program and being accepted in the program. Uh, next uh, the line of the interviews and application process will start um, second semester for our 2025 cohort. Uh, I know at some point in time, but within the next few weeks, uh, we're looking very forward to opening up uh, Lavish Studio to the community. Um, we have the, did some opening up to our staff and students uh, to provide students with, with practice, um, practicum experience that they need to, to get the hours that they need to receive their um, uh, licensure after they finish the two-year program. They need 1,500 hours to do that. Um, but, but we're moving in an excellent direction to, to move forward to service community and um, you know, with that being said, you know, we just look forward to our brand new cohort and servicing them, our open house, and making sure that all of our students are well prepared to pass that exam with their 1,500 hours, but most importantly, making sure they get the eight credit hours that they need to graduate from high school as well. Thank you for that overview. Um, and then we had a question just come in. Uh, are the buses aware that the students will not have an ID to show when getting on the bus? And the answer to that is that uh, drivers will not expect students to have IDs on the first day. They should they should not be denied entry to school, and they should have their ID on the way home. There was a question, Mr. Burley, regarding the bus schedule on the website has the old last year's uh, information, when will that be updated? I can take care of that tomorrow. Um, any any parent that has bus schedule questions or concerns, uh, always feel free to contact the Dean's office at 585-2038. Uh, but large, largely the schedules remain the same from year to year. I will make sure that is updated in the morning. And someone asked, what is Lavish? Lavish is our cosmetology barbering studio. 
So this is a it's a, 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 a spa basically where you can come and get services. That's what Lavish is, one of our premier um, CTE programs. Thank you. And we have another question that's come in about uh, related to CTE. So uh, somebody asked, how about financial classes? I believe it's a very important subject. Um, I believe they're uh, talking about financial literacy. Excellent question. I'm glad that it was brought up. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this coming school year, we develop a course called 21st Century Entrepreneurship that talks about uh, personal uh, financial success for students and, and preparing them to be uh, entrepreneurs in, in the field uh, where the, the job market is very demanding at this point in time. So we do have that financial literacy component that we can offer to our students. It's called 21st Century Entrepreneurship. It's also a dual credit course um, where students will be able to to attain college credit through South Suburban College as well. So we do have that. Excellent question. Thank you. A lot of awesome opportunities for our students. And the next question I believe would be best for our principals. So we have a parent that asks, is the locker info on the schedule? Yes, uh, the locker schedule is on the schedule. It will be on the uh, as I said, there'll be the hard copy of schedules available on the first day it is on there and can also be accessed through PowerSchool. I can't picture it right now exactly uh, what you need to click on, um, but there is a way through PowerSchool as well to see that locker information. Uh, but don't, no one needs to be worried. As I said, they will be on that hard copy schedule uh, Monday morning. We will have staff and student ambassadors in the hallways to assist students with locker issues. And anybody that has any questions or concerns about lockers, combinations, and if they're not able to access it or find it right away, uh, the ladies in the dean's office will be happy to help you out. Thank you. And then we've also received a question that asks about uh, fees, if they've completed registering their child but still haven't seen the fees. There should have been a section in the online registration that discussed fees and fee waivers, uh, but if you did not see that, you can find information about that at your campus's bookstore and you can pay them there. Or the other thing that you could do is you could check on our uh, website and there is a section to see exactly what the fees are there as well as an opportunity to be able to pay that online. How does a student sign up for driver's ed uh, principles? If they've completed the classroom portion, then they can sign up for the behind the wheel hours in the bookstore. How do they sign up for the book portion? The classroom portion is assigned like a regular class through their counselor. It's a survey P that includes a, the classroom driver's ed unit. So that should be on their schedule. Okay. Right. And then that behind the wheel, I know there's a question related to this as well. So everyone receives the class driver's ed, uh, but that is just the classroom portion. It is an option to do the behind the wheel that is done after school on Saturdays. Uh, and there is a fee involved in, involved with that uh, choosing to do the behind the wheel. Uh, principals, there's been another common question that I've seen in the chat. How will parents know if their student's medical information has been verified? Is there a specific date if they've already turned in those documents that parents will hear back? Once the schedule is visible in PowerSchool, that means that it has been verified. Um, our nurses are working under a backlog right now, but there's two of them that are on it and they're working through them sheet by sheet, hour by hour, day by day, as fast as they can. Yes, um, at North, we've been continuing to send uh, phone dialers, emails if records are not complete. Uh, so I would say one thing is no news is good news. Uh, if you're not getting those, uh, those messages because I, we are sending them often uh, to the people who we don't have everything verified for. So uh, no news is good news. 
And then I will, we will be sending something out over the weekend uh, to everyone that's fully registered, you know, with more information, start time, uh, bus information, what doors to enter, all that. So that will be one more confirmation for you uh, when you receive that, that everything is all, you are all set to go. And for the center, uh, your medical records are covered because all of our medical records for our students are housed at the home campus. So it would be whichever process for North or South. Again, as Principal Rosinski said, no news is good news. For those students who there were some concerns, you should have received an individual call uh, either today or prior to that with regard to anything that may have been missing. There's just a small number of students at the center that fall into that category. So personal phone calls have been made to that effect. We will be offering COVID testing for our staff um, as well as our uh, students. We're in the process of getting both of those set up. Correct, Ms. Uh, Shuba? Just shake your head. Okay. I saw that was a question there. Thank you. And are somebody also asked if there was SAT, uh, if there were any SAT prep questions or prep courses? Yes, uh, students are enrolled in an online program that's linked to the College Board called Khan Academy, K H A N Academy. Um, they set up their uh, College Board accounts as early as sophomore year and would have access to that from that point forward. Thank you. And uh, related to that, I also do want to uh, mention that there is also homework help available for students. We have a 24-7 uh, um, online uh, homework help available. It's called Paper 24-7. Becky, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, so it's very easily accessible to students. Um, when they open up their Chromebook, they have a My Apps portal and they just click on that paper icon um, and they can sign in uh, with Google. And that is literally anytime, 1 a.m. in the morning, during the school day, during the lunch hour, um, while they're on the bus coming back home from a, a sporting event, they can uh, get help from a tutor in any subject, uh, advanced placement courses, uh, a world language, and those tutors also offer tutoring in different languages as well. También um, pueden ofre ofrecer um, ayuda en idiomas diferentes también. Thank you. And we've also been getting a lot of questions just about um, registration being incomplete. Who can they contact for that? So again, uh, if you have any registration questions regarding your your students' registration being incomplete, please be able uh, please make sure to contact your campus's registrar, and they'll be able to best answer your question as far as what it's what is missing versus its medical records, um, something on the online form, or any residency documents. The question regarding I'm a freshman, who's, how do I find out who's my counselor? What's the answer to that? Uh, that's part of our, uh, well, I'll speak for the North Campus. Part of our first week uh, is, is really, even though it's, it's a traditional schedule for freshmen during the week, uh, that first week of school, that is really a kind of orientation period. And we, we break up by content area. Um, math, English, science, and social studies. Each content area takes a different area of focus with the freshmen. Um, so, we, you know, for example, one content handles all, everything counseling guidance office related. So they would actually, the counselors would come in that first week of school, introduce themselves. Um, and then for uh, the Dean's office, the same thing happens. They go into one of the other content areas. Uh, so all that really takes place uh, that first week of school for freshmen. And that's why I do want to encourage everyone to finish this registration process. Uh, if you have not already, residency, health records, all of that, because uh, there's really just a wealth, a wealth of information uh, that first week of school for our freshmen. So is it safe to say that if you caught the bus for the last couple of 
of years at the same location. It will probably be the same location for you to catch the bus this year. From when you say for the last couple of years, I would say no, but from last year, yes, we did make some changes last year, um, combined a couple of routes, but yes, at North, I can say the routes are identical to last year's routes. But if you're going back three or four years, they might not be the same. What about you, Mr. Burrell? Exactly the same. Okay, and Mr. Williams? Uh, the center, because we're constantly getting new students, they are adjusted, but I do know that uh, we finalized our bus schedule today, and Ms. Nichols, they should look for an email from Kay Nichols at TFD215 specific to uh, their busing, and a question was asked, and I did answer in the Q&A regarding if their student is, if the home school is north or south, but they are at the tech center for part of the day, they will be on a bus route in the morning coming. So you should have received that email. And then we transport from South or back to North and South after those morning CTE courses. And then they are at North or South on those routes if they ride the bus and then they come to us and we transport them uh, within district. And then in the afternoon, they would be on a bus route that would be different uh, from probably their morning route to North or South. Um, but then it'll be the home route from the center. Thank you. Um, Ms. Travis, uh, I hope the buses are on time. We meet with them almost weekly to ensure, and I will tell you, they've given uh, TFD 215 priority. I've heard horror stories about some, some of the other districts, kids waiting for 30 or 40 minutes, um, but we're pushing for the buses to be on time. They are, are constantly dealing with a staff shortage. Um, I'm hoping that it's better this year, but we're constantly pushing for buses to be on time. We don't want our students and we don't want your children to be waiting on a bus stop for 30 or 40 minutes. So that's our goal. ICE students are attending school at the tech or the regular assigned school? Uh, in general, that'd be at the regular, regular assigned school. Also, I see the question about culinary. At North, the new culinary uh, room is down uh, in the CTE, what I consider the CTE wing, uh, now by our lavish studio. If you're North, I think Maria, I think I know who you are. Um, you're, if you're familiar with the band area, uh, that is where culinary arts will be taking place. Thank you. I would say, Mr. Rizensi, definitely mentioned to culinary arts students that, that uh, for maybe the first couple of weeks, uh, their culinary arts class will be meeting in room 128 in, in, at TF North. Thank you. And I do want to uh, reiterate for those that weren't uh, part of the beginning of this webinar that this is being recorded and will be sent out to everybody. So there are a lot of uh, questions that have already been answered. Um, so if we do not uh, get to them, um, it could have been that we have already answered it earlier during this webinar. And you will be re receiving a uh, written copy of this as well in both English and in Spanish. And I also want to make sure that uh, all the parents are also aware of that besides um, myself, um, again, I'm, my name is Karina Hernandez Casares, and I'm the Family Outreach Specialist and Spanish Language Interpreter. And besides myself, there are a lot of other wonderful uh, supports for our families here. And so I want to also make sure that the families are aware of those. So we do have uh, four wonderful parent liaisons and we have two per campus. Um, so at North, we have Ms. Uh, Socorro Evans and also Ms. Tanya Reed. And then for South, uh, we have Mr. Uh, Darvell Stinson and uh, Teresa Stiegel. Um, so I also want to make sure that everybody is aware that they're also uh, here to support all of you and they can also answer any questions that you might have. Um, and be able to connect you to the right people as well. And thank you, parent liaisons, for being on the call. I do see you as a participant. 
So thank you very much. And I do see that we've also hit the um, hour mark and we want to make sure that uh, we uh, respect all of your uh, time parents. We know that you are very busy during this time of year and uh, want to make sure that um, you can uh, get back to uh, your night. Um, but again, uh, we do have one more question that I want to answer. So somebody asked, how can, uh, how can I be more involved as a parent? Um, so again, we want to, uh, you can either reach out to your principal, you can reach out to the different parent liaisons. They have events about once a month and they usually have a wonderful meal available for parents along with uh, great speakers with different topics that are relevant to parents. So that is definitely a great way to be involved. We also have a bilingual parent advisory committees and um, those ones are especially uh, great supports for parents who do not have um, English as their primary language. And then uh, we also do have district-wide family events. Um, so this is our first one of the year. And we thought it would be a great way to kick off the year by answering all of your questions. But our next one will be the Parent Social, which will be on August 31st at the TF South Grand Lobby, but it will be open to all parents district-wide. Um, and that one will be at 6.30 p.m. again on at August 31st. And all of those events, you will be notified through email, on our social media pages, on our individual campuses' websites, and uh, specifically for this event, again, we will, this is being recorded. So this one will be posted tomorrow morning on our Facebook, our Twitter. Um, I'll also make sure that it gets emailed out to all of you. And then along with that written copy uh, that will be available both in Spanish and in English. Um, so I really just wanna say, you know, make sure to watch your email, your mail, uh, check your, emails often and don't hesitate to reach out to your schools or uh, your uh, principals or the parent liaisons. Um, all of our staff is more than happy to help you and answer your questions to make sure that you have a very successful school year. Dr. Jones, would you like to add anything to wrap us up? Well, thank you. This is exciting. I hope we've answered as many questions as possible. I will uh, uh, end by letting all of you all know that uh, one of our priorities along with academics and offering students different options is to make sure that our schools are safe and secure. And to that end, we have created a safety committee at each campus to address some of the concerns that we had last year with weapons and uh, fights and things like that to come up as a committee, as a team with solutions. And so I want to, you to encourage your child, if they see something, to say something. That is our motto, because a lot of times students know before we know. And so please have that conversation with your child and make sure that you are aware of what they're bringing to school because lookalike guns are guns in the eyes of the law. And so I have a hard time going through an expulsion hearing and I'm hoping that we won't have to do that this year, but it starts at home. And so I'm, I'm admonishing our parents, have those conversations, know what's going on with your, your, your child and make sure that they're not bringing things uh, to school that they should not bring and that they're not engaging in behaviors that they should not be behaving in. So I'm, I'm uh, putting the onus on you. Make sure, please parents have that conversation. But thank you um, very much for this. Thank you principals and administrators and my assistant and everyone who's been involved with tonight. Um, we're ready to go and we're gonna treat your child just like there are children because they are ours. You're just loaning them to us for a few hours. And I thank you for that. Thank you, Ms. Sakarina, great job. 
Thank you. And again, thank you all for joining us. And thank you to all of our panelists and also IT who's been on um, standby and has been a wonderful help as well. And anybody from um, the district that has joined us as well, along with the parents. So with that, we're going to close out this webinar. But if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. And again, we will be sending out this information to all parents and guardians. Have a great night. Thank you.